Hi everyone, I'm Shelly from There's No Place Like Home at redheadmom8.wordpress.com. We're now in the middle of May, and for those of us who live in states that require us to report to our school districts at the end of the year, we are now getting ready to maybe have our evaluations or turn our um, samples into the school districts or our evaluation letters, whatever it may be that our individual states require. Um, so today I decided that I'm going to talk to you about three reasons why you should avoid overcompliance with your state homeschool laws and how to go about doing that. Now I'm going to admit that when I first started homeschooling, I leaned towards overcompliance. I didn't realize that's what I was doing. To me, I just thought, I'm going to show this school district how great homeschooling is. And at that time in Pennsylvania, we still used to have to give our portfolios to the school districts. We no longer have to do that. But our portfolios really only ever had to contain a few work samples, and that was it. But I used to turn in, and I know I'm not alone in this, I used to turn in portfolios this thick of all of the cool stuff that my kids were doing. It was kind of my way of showing the school district how awesome homeschooling is. You know, we go on all these great field trips. We do all these neat experiments. Look at the fun stuff we're doing. And I didn't realize that I was actually kind of making things harder possibly for other homeschooling families who actually do comply with the, the homeschool laws. So that's actually the, the first thing that I'm gonna talk to you about. Um, if you give your school district more than the law requires, you are actually making it harder for homeschooling families who comply with the law, but only comply with the law and don't go any farther. And when it comes to, this, to, the, to your state homeschool laws, you want to give your school district what the law requires, no more and no less. And I know that there are some people who do lean towards overcompliance, like I used to do, because they really want to show their school districts what a great education they're giving their kids. But I think what you need to realize is it really makes it hard for other homeschooling families because they might be giving the school districts only what the law requires and they are doing what they're supposed to be doing but when you have some homeschoolers giving the school district these huge you know notebooks of work samples and then you have other homeschoolers just giving you know a few because that's all that is required it's going to make it look like those homeschoolers who are only giving a few samples aren't doing their job as homeschool parents. And that is not true at all. You know, just because we don't give all of those papers to the school district doesn't mean that we're not doing them. It just means that that's what we're giving to show them that our kids have made progress. So you really want to think about that before you give your school district more than what they ask for. And another example that I actually have of this is since our state homeschool laws did change back in 2014, um, at least I know my school district really wasn't well informed about the changes. So when I turned in my evaluation letter, and first let me say, in Pennsylvania, we used to have to turn in a letter from an evaluator, a portfolio, standardized test scores, a book log, and um, what was the other thing? Oh, um, just... Uh, uh, some sort of way to show that we had homeschooled for 180 days throughout the year. So that's what we used to have to turn in. Now what we have to turn in is only the, the letter from the evaluator. We still have to keep all of that other stuff, but only our evaluator sees that now. So the school district gets only the letter from the evaluator. Well, a couple years ago when I turned in just that letter. It was the first year after the homeschool law was changed. And when I gave them the letter from the evaluator, they asked me for my kids' standardized test scores. And I said to them, those are no longer required um, for me to give to you anymore. I said, only the evaluator says that. And she said, oh, well, I didn't know that. And she was okay with it. But, you know, two years later, actually it's going on three years now, they still on the letter that they give out to homeschooling parents at the beginning of the year, my cat, they still, Bella, 
they still actually write down on the letter to homeschooling parents that at the end of the year you have to turn in work samples and and it says and test scores if applicable because you take them in third fifth and eighth grade here so they're still asking for those so apparently that means that some parents in the district do not know their homeschool laws and or either just don't want to say no to the district and they're still turning in those test scores so there's no other reason that I can see that they would write that on the letter because if all of the parents would tell them you don't get those anymore I don't think it would be an issue so I'm guessing that some people are still doing it so yeah that's you really want to be careful with that the second reason that you do not want to lean towards over compliance is because homeschooling advocates work really hard to get you the most reasonable homeschool regulations that your state will allow. You know, they they really put their heart and soul into this and spend so much time um, just testifying and, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Talking things over, that's not the word, but, you know, talking things over with people, um, trying to get them to... Um, that bothers me that I can't think of that word. <laughs> anyway, so, um, but anyway, they work really hard to get you the, the laws that, that you have at this point. So yeah, even in Pennsylvania, our laws might be a little strict compared to other um, states. I know that New York is also pretty strict, but think about how much harder they would be if you did not have these people working so hard to get you these laws that are not absolutely crazy. So if you think about it, when you are giving the school district um, more than what the law regulates, you're actually going against all that hard work that those people did because they're trying to make things, you know, not so stressful for you and more reasonable for you. So you really need to think about that. Don't work against what people have worked so hard for, for your benefit. Um, the third thing is because it gives homeschooling parents more work than is necessary. And yeah, this is so true. I I used to have um, an evaluator who was a very nice lady, but she used to ask for way more than the homeschool law states. And I used to do it because honestly, I wasn't well read on the homeschool laws. I kind of just took her word for it and did what she told me to. And it wasn't until after I looked into it and talked to some other people that I found out that I was doing way more than I should be. So if you over comply, I don't even know if that's a real word, but if, if you do this, you're giving yourself so much more work than you really do. And let's be honest, you know, homeschooling is a tough job. We're literally doing stuff all the time because we're not just homeschooling. We're still running a house and, you know, raising our kids and cooking and cleaning. So it really is a full-time job to homeschool. So you really don't want to give yourself more work than you need to have. And I've also recently talked to someone who's, um, evaluator is requiring her to give letter grades and that is also not required at least in our state's homeschool laws it is something that is is not required so that's I'm actually going to lead into that into how to go about um, avoiding over compliance but I just wanted to give those examples that you you really don't want to give yourself more work than you need to it, it's it's needless you don't need to do it it's completely unnecessary and there are really three really easy ways to avoid over compliance. The first one is obvious. Know your state's homeschool laws. Okay. Don't listen to what other people tell you. Look, look at them yourselves. You can check out at HSLDA's website. It's HSLDA.com, I believe. And they have a state by state breakdown of everybody's individual laws. Also, I'm pretty sure that every state has some sort of a website, kind of a go-to website for their homeschoolers to read up on things like this. I know that in, for Pennsylvania, it's askpauline.com. So she has a great breakdown also of the Pennsylvania homeschool law. So yeah, it's really important to know your homeschool laws because if you don't know what your law says, you don't know if you're giving what you're supposed to or not, right? So that comes with the second one. Be firm with your school district, just as I was when the school district asked me for the standardized test. If your school district is asking you for things that you know the law does not require, tell them that. Tell them that the law does not require it. 
And yeah, in order for you to do this, you have to know your state's homeschool laws. See, these two go hand in hand. So really, read up on your state homeschool laws and be firm with the school district because I'm not saying that they're being nefarious about this or anything. They really might not know what your state's homeschool laws say, but at the same time, like my school district, I, they've been informed what the laws say and they're still trying to go around it. So you need to be your own advocate, know your laws and tell the school district when they are asking you for too much and do not give it to them. And my third tip for how to avoid overcompliance is be really careful when you choose your evaluator. Make sure that you choose an evaluator who is asking you for what the law requires and no more. There are some evaluators who really, they're, they're very meticulous and I understand that because a lot of us have those sorts of personalities. But we really need to remember that, again, homeschooling is a tough job. We don't need to do all of this extra work. So if you're looking for an evaluator or if maybe you have an evaluator who is making you do things that the, the law does not say that you have to, I would really consider looking for another evaluator. Yes, I'm not saying that it makes them terrible people. It just makes um, our jobs easier if we have someone who is on the same page with us about the homeschooling law. You know, you want an evaluator, again, who accepts no more than what the law says and no less. Of course, you want them to do their job and to um, do what they have to do, but you also don't want them asking for all sorts of stuff that it, nowhere does it say that, that you have to give that. So really think about this. Overcompliance is a big issue at this time of year. So I really want to encourage you to think twice before overcomplying with your school district. So I hope you have a great day.